First, we check the connection and the data stored in MaxPuff. We're using a smartphone running a USB terminal. Sending the command D will print the data stored in the RAM. Sending the command E prints the data stored in the EEPROM. Now let's connect the card reader to MaxBook V5. This is a new art reader. We lost the connection. And let's see what happens if we swipe a MaxDrive card through the MaxDrive reader. Okay, this is a fail. MaxPuff got disconnected at the time the reader was attached. So let's start the communication again. The second fail, the reader did not read correctly. This is a common problem when using MaxDrive cards, so just try it again. Now the data is printed correctly. The track one was obtained. Send in the command D to check if the data was stored in the RAM. And here is it. Using a second card to obtain track 2. And we will use a third max drive card. Okay, this data red is track 1 and track 2. We will copy and send track 2 to save it in the MaxPuff. But we will need to make some changes to the string. Note, <laughs> wearing long nails makes it harder. We need to obtain only the second track. Track 2 uses a interrogation mark as an end sentinel and a semicolon as a start sentinel. So let's make these changes and send track 2 to the max proof. In this case, since the data obtained from the second card was both tracks, the data read from card 1 was overridden. Using the command S will write the data to the EEPROM. Note that the EEPROM has limited read-write cycle, so be careful when using it. Now that we have the data stored in the EEPROM, we can detach and even power off MaxPuff. Now let's emulate the tracks. Inserting MaxPuff to a reader connected to a PC. Connecting again, MaxPuff and sending E to check if the data is still there. And there is it. Now let's play track 1 by sending P1. And there is the track. Now track 2 by sending P2. It is possible to send both tracks using just the command P. 